Alright guys, welcome back to Best Ban. Uh, today we're going to take a look at Wusa versus Velajul. Um, we're going to take a look at both their skills. We're going to look at the, kind of the stats on how they perform in RTA. And then maybe come to a consensus on which one's the best ban. Though of course it's always sort of depending on the situation, of course. So, Wusa, let's take a look at the skills. Leader skill, actually good. Accuracy, leader skill. Um, you know, I think I've seen it used a couple times. It's not often that people use Wusa's accuracy skill. I'd say the more often used accuracy skills are Okeanos and Ganymede, but that's just because of the comps they happen to run. But still, very useful and viable. Um, first skill, Yin Yang attack. Attacks the enemy with the power of Yin Yang, puts the enemy to sleep for two turns with a 20% chance. Damage increases according to max HP. This thing is game changing. When it lands, it's like a crushing hit because you're you're, you're, it's like it's not even the skill that he wants to use all the time, and he gets two turns of CC. Plus, it hits pretty hard with the max HP. I mean, Wusas are built, you know, not like tanks, but their their priorities are speed first of all and HP secondary, so it still hits pretty hard. Fantastic first skill, super super good. Second skill is his heal. Um, inflicts damage that's proportionate proportionate to max HP. Records the HP of all allies by fifteen percent of max HP. This thing's really great, especially early. You'll see Wusa users use it fairly liberally at the beginning of matches to recover what HP has been damaged through the shield. Um, it declines as the game declines because the max HP is going down in RTA. Um, but it's still it's still pretty good, I, I would say. Um, and it, it hits really hard. I've been killed by this thing. It's annoying. <laughs> I think maybe they use it more offensively than they do uh, defensively. I'm not a Wusu user. I wish I was. All right, number three, Wish of Immortality. This is the bread and butter. Three turn immunity, super rare. Only two units that can do it. And the shield equal to 15% of max HP. So, you know, you build them as tanky as you can to buff all three of these skills, but you get as much speed on them as you can. So this thing's great. The shield can be pretty tough to get through early in games, and it declines as the game goes on. Unlike a Bastet shield, which is always good because it's based on level. This one will get smaller and smaller. So keep that in mind. If you're late in a game, don't don't be so scared of a Wusa shield. If Wusa's still around. If Wusa's still around late in the game, you're probably in trouble anyway. Um, but the three-turn immunity is the bread and butter, right? That's why we're here. We're comparing three-turn immunities. So that is Wusa. Let's go take a look at Velajul. How about Velajul? There we go. So leader skill, HP to fire 50%. Not really relevant in uh, RTA. If, you, if you're choosing this, you are out of a better options. You probably would rather choose something else. Um, so not great. First skill, uh, pretty useful. I mean, it, it does damage according to defense, which is great. Defense scaling, um, hits pretty hard and the removal is sneaky good. Like you don't really think about it. It's just suddenly you're facing a Velajul and something you were relying on being there, a will or an attack buff is just gone. And you're like, what, when did that happen? Um, so pretty nice first skill. I wouldn't say better than Wusa's, but still really quite effective. Second skill deals damage. Three turns of continuous damage, doesn't really matter, but I mean, it's not horrible, but the defense is what makes it really hit, and it must scale really well, because it hits like a truck. I get hit by this thing, it's just like, boom, you know, get evaporated. And then here's what we're here for, Sanctuary, uh, removes all harmful effects, is a AoE cleanse, a three turn immunity, and a 30% attack buff, so that is great. Um, very different than Wusa, um, but still really, really, really good. So when would you bring these monsters? Um, you can bring them together because then you have two three turn immunity buffs. You know, they, you, you are allowed to get one because they'll ban one and the other one will go through, which immunity is fantastic. It prevents you from being defense broken or stunned and all the things that make you lose. Um, Velajul, you know, you don't see this build as much lately, but you can build it to go first. So you build up as fast as you can Velajul. You get that 30% speed buff and suddenly you're speed tuned and your whole team gets to go uh, with immunity on them, which is nice. Velajuls, I think, work better as kind of damage dealers i see some people bringing what looks like a support team but the velajul is actually their damage dealer and so it's buffing it's uh, increasing the speed and it's nuking down with its defense scaling so that can be really nice um the only problem with velajul is it doesn't bring a heal which wusa brings so wusa is sustain velajul is not sustain um velajul is turn advantage damage immunity and cleanse which are all great but wusa is like crazy sustain it's the shield and the heal so he can overheal you with the shield give you more hp than you should have and heal whatever hp is damaged so the two very different picks if you are in a match with a velajul and no other sustain your your clock is ticking every hp you take won't be returned whereas with wusa you can take a few hits bounce back so that's the main uh reason you would bring either one of those monsters all right let's look at the data 
This is the most recent data I have. It was from Introspective Bethel? Introspective Bethel from Reddit. Please, please make more of this Introspective Bethel. This stuff is awesome. I love parsing this data. There's so much here. Um, and it's, it's almost overwhelming. So I'm going to read into this what I think it's saying. It may or may not be correct, but we'll, we'll look at it. So we have Wusa as the number three most picked monster in RTA as of this data. Um, pick rate 63%, ban rate about 30%. So interestingly, he's picked less than Molong and Gany, but when he is picked, he's banned more than them. I'm actually curious if he's the highest banned monster in RTA. Let's check real quick. I'm not... Okay, so Diana is banned 27. Uh, there's the Tiana. Tiana banned 37. That's probably because when people bring Tiana, Amelia banned higher. Interesting. When people bring Tiana, they are doing like a cleave and you've got to ban something out of the cleave to stop it. All right. So the ban rate, 28% high in the top tier of banned monsters. Um, win rate, 50% when he goes through and 50.5% when he is banned. So his team wins more when he's banned, but he always wins over 50%, which is great. Anything over 50% is great. Like, Molong's win is 53, almost 54, but Wusa, 50%. Very nice. His teammates, Molong, Tessa, Oki, Fenying, Perna, sustain tank damage. I mean, you just want to hang out under immunity and just wreck into them by putting uh, detrimental effects on them. You know, Fenying does that. Perna just eats them up. Tessa deals with a lot of the things that maybe want to try to deal with Wusa. Um, opponents, what do opponents do against Wusa? They pick Chillings. Yes, Chillings is a great counter. Um, Perna, not really a relevant counter pick, but Perna's good, I guess. Um, Diana is a nice counter pick. Velajul, interesting. They're trying to break it up, like breaking up a Gany Hathor. And then Ethna is a pure counter pick um, to strip and try to murder. So interesting, interesting. All right, so let's go look at the Velajul. So Wusa, we're going to remember win rate 50%, 50% roughly. Pick rate 63, ban rate 28. All right, we got to go down to number eight picked monster, Velajul. 37%, much less. Ban rate, also much less. Win rate, also, you know, fairly significantly less. 48%, 48%. Um, like, looking at Okeanos, right above, you know, about a percentage more, and Okeanos is widely considered to be one of the premier RTA units. So, in the same ballpark, but less, you know, significantly less than Wusa. All right, what are Velajul's teammates? Molong, Fenyang, Perna, Sierra, Tessa. Same kind of thing. Interesting, it doesn't say um, Wusa here. You know, maybe that's not as much of a thing. I don't see it as much um, up in, like, you know, Conk 3, G1, G2. I don't see a lot of Veljul Wusas as much as I used to. Um, that used to be kind of a big deal. But here's preceding picks. Wusa is the most third most common preceding pick, so kind of interesting. Um, what do opponents pick against Veljuls? They pick Pernos. They pick Chilling again. Okeanos is a nice one because you, you generally uh, feel like you're going to outspeed Whereas Okeanos is riskier against Wusa since you've got two buffs to try to hit and you might miss. Tiana is not a counter pick, it's just sustain. And then Chow is kind of a counter pick because you're trying to nuke it down. Um, interesting. So, what do we think? I think out of these two, the Wusa Vela comp is not quite as common as it used to be. Now it's one or the other with like a hybrid, um, a hybrid immunity monster like a Harmonia or a Triana where it's like kind of toolsy hybrid uh, immunity. They do more than just immunity. They kind of mess around. They have a little cleanse, um, death prevention, the balance. So that's maybe more common. But if it's me and it's Veljul versus Wusa, you know, you got to have a way to deal with Wusa. I mean, look at these monsters. Molong, Gany, Wusa, Perna, Sierra, top five most picked. You know, you have to know how to deal with those because you're going to see them all the time. You're going to see Wusas 63% of the time. If you're a Wusa user, it'll be less because you'll pick them, and that'll ban them effectively, but you got to know how to deal with them. So if it's me, I'm banning Wusa over Vela every time if I have the option. Um, the sustain, I think, is the biggest threat. It gives your opponent opportunities to violent proc, which is how people win in RTA. Um, the longer you can hang out and live, the more likely your Fenying is going to violent proc, the more likely your Perna, your Tessa is going to violent proc. And if a Tessa Violent procs, something dies. If a Perna Violent procs, something probably dies. So I'm banning the Wusa every time if I'm worried about the two of them. The Velajul is it's great, and it does a lot of cool things. And if you have to have a three-turn immunity, you got to have one of those two. But it's sort of a different, it's part of a different kind of a strategy. 
that needs more sustain, whereas Wusa brings his own sustain. So sustain plus immunity, great all-in-one monster. Whereas Velajul, you, you kind of need to have a second pick that has sustain in it, which is probably why Velajul Triana um, might be a better comp than some other things. Maybe not better than Velajul Wusa, but gives you a little bit of sustain. So that's my verdict. I personally would ban Wusa. I think the stats play it out as well based on the ban rate and the win rate. Um, but, you know, tell me what you guys think. What do you guys do? What do you see with the Wusa and the Velajul? And, you know, who do you ban? Who would you prefer? Anyway, that is best ban. If you have a, a suggestion on who we should best ban next time, feel free to, to leave it below and we'll, we'll dig into it as soon as we can. So thanks for watching, everybody, and take care.